let's knock on wood. Because in this tutorial, we're going to add our own custom wood to the game. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves in the J once more. And no, you don't have amnesia or it's some sort of Groundhog's Day. This is actually an updated version of the custom wood tutorial that came yesterday, simply because there was a little bit of a mistake in there and this is now fixed. And we're just going to do it properly this time. I also want to give a quick shout out to Same But Different and TSLED from the Minecraft Mod Development Discord. They found this error and they made me aware of it. So thank you very much to both of you. We're going to make five different blocks. For that, we're just going to copy over the amethyst trapdoor here. And we're going to say redwood underscore log. And then here, of course, the same redwood underscore log. Now, this is going to be a rotated pillar block with the following properties from. And then instead of a material, it's going to take a block. So blocks dot oak underscore log. And then all of the rest here can be deleted. And then just making sure that we have set the proper amount of parentheses. And there you go. The redwood log we will now copy over four times. So now we have five blocks created. This will be the redwood wood with wood here and then the same in here. So this is going to be from oak wood. This is going to be the stripped stripped underscore redwood underscore log and same here. So stripped underscore redwood log and this is from the could you guess stripped underscore oak log and this is going to be the stripped underscore redwood underscore wood a little bit of a weird name but we'll manage I'm sure of it stripped underscore redwood underscore wood and this is then from the stripped oak wood and the last one is going to be the redwood underscore planks of course once again with the redwood underscore planks here as well and then last but not least this is not a rotated pillar block but just a normal block this is going to take the properties from oak planks and then Crazily enough, all of the blocks have been registered successfully and we'll now move on to the favorite part of everyone, the JSON files. Right, I'm quickly going to copy over the block state JSON files for the five blocks and we'll then take a look at them. Let's get the planks out of the way. They are The planks are just a normal block. They're, there's nothing special to the planks whatsoever, so we can just ignore those basically. And the other ones are a little bit more interesting because they're all rotated pillar blocks. This means that they have three different axes that they can be placed on. If you ever place logs, then you know that you can place them in basically three different axes, the X, the Y, and the Z axis. This is basically what, what each of the block states here has in store store for us. Those then of course simply point to a specific model just with a little bit of a rotation here added in the x or the y axis. All of the JSON files are of course available for download for you in the description below so no worries you don't have to type everything out yourself. Right, the block models are a bit more complex. There are a few more of them. Once more, the planks are really just, they're just a normal cube all as you can see. The interesting things are for example the log where this is a cube underscore column. This should make sense to you a log, of course, has a top and a bottom. So this is exactly this end texture here. And the sides are then sort of the bark, which is also what the redwood wood has all around. So the wood type of a block is where only the bark shows. Redwood log horizontal sim has a different parent here. So this is simply the block laid horizontally. The same goes, of course, for the stripped variants of the log. So overall, the JSON files are very similar to each other because of course they're all rotated pillar blocks. At the end of the day, they simply only point to different textures here. So that's really all of it. There is actually nothing interesting to say about the item models whatsoever. They simply point back to the block model. That's basically all of it. Of course, we also need the textures and those are of course also available for download in the description below. So no worries, you can take those textures as well and add them to your own project. Let's also not forget to add the translation text here to our en underscore us json file. And instead of starting the game, we have one more thing that we need to add. And the thing we need to add is we have a log and we want this to turn into the stripped version of it when we right click with an axe. Now I've already opened the axe item here. This is the axe item that we've already used to make our amethyst axe right here. So you can simply middle mouse button click on the axe item and then it will bring you to the axe item class. And in here it has a map that is called block underscore stripping underscore map. Now this is something that we are going to actually need to modify. The only issue is that number one, this is an immutable map, so we can't change it. And second of all, it is protected. And third of all, it is final. So there's a few barriers here that 
that makes it pretty much impossible for us to modify this. But of course it doesn't. And this is the part where I tell you about access transformers or ATs for short. As the name suggests, it's a way to transform the access modifiers of certain fields or methods, for example. Now this should be used very sparingly only when absolutely necessary and when forge doesn't have a method to modify something because usually there is a method. In this case, however, we will need to use this. Even though it has a big name, it's actually not that complicated. So the first thing that we need instead of our meta in folder, right click new file access transformer. Very important that this is written correctly dot CFG. So config basically. And what do we have to put in here? Well, for that, we have to actually switch to Discord. Why do we switch to Discord? It's not only to plug my Discord server link is in the description below but also because you will need to use the mapping bot. This is available in the mappings bot channel here in Minecraft modding to actually get the, to get the unobfuscated method name as well as how to use the AT. And to do this, we can type in exclamation point MCPF. So this is basically the MCP for a field. And then we have to take the name of the field. The name of the field here is block underscore stripping underscore map. So we'll just copy this and then paste it in. And so this is the command we're gonna use. Hit enter. And then as you can see the mappings here, first of all, this is the name of the field. Then you can see AT, we actually get this AT here and we can simply copy this over. So right click and then copy. And then we are done with Discord. Thank you very much. And this we're going to put in here. We're not done yet. Let me quickly explain this. So what's going to happen is that it's going to make this field, which is the unobfuscated name. So this is this has to do with the mappings, right? In our mappings, this is called block underscore stripping underscore map. Unobfuscated, it's called field underscore 203176 underscore A. So some crazy thing. And we're going to set this to public with this configuration, basically. And that's great. However, it will still be final, which is going to be an issue. So we still can't modify it because it's an immutable map. We can't actually add anything to it and because it's final. We can't reassign this. Therefore, we also need to add a minus F right here, uh, save this, and then we can actually get this going. So this is all that we need to add to the access transformer CFG. We can then close this and then we can open our build.gradle file and go down just a little bit. And as you can see, we have this access transformer right here, which actually points to exactly the file that we've just made. We can simply uncomment this and then once everything has been set up, we can simply reload our Grail changes right here. So we can simply click the little elephant, as I like to call it. Then we have to just let this run through and wait until this is done. This might take, you know, up to about two minutes or so, depending on how fast your computer is. Right, as you can see, it took about two minutes for me. You can see it probably worked because this axe item here has a different icon. So let's close it and reopen it. And then all of a sudden, public static map block stripping map. As you can see, the block stripping map now is public and static and is not final anymore. So we can now modify this however we want. And the way we do it is we're going to go into our setup method here in the tutorial mod class. We're going to call event.nqwork. So we're going to make a new runnable in here again, just like we've done in the client setup method. And this is going to call x item dot, there it is, block stripping map. This is going to be equal to a new immutable map dot builder of type block and block because that's the that's the map we're going to have. And the first thing I'm going to put in here is put all and we're going to put the x item dot strippable map in there so that all of the original blocks are in there again. And then we'll put in our new blocks. So this is going to be mod blocks dot redwood log dot get mod blocks dot stripped redwood log dot get. And then the second one is the mod blocks redwood wood dot get and blocks dot stripped wet redwood wood dot get. And then last but not least, we call the build method. And there you go. Now this works. And this should also be compatible with other mods that do this, because we always put back the stripping map back into itself. So there shouldn't be any issues with compatibility, right? And now with this added, this will also work. And this is all that we need to do. So let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft once more. And let's see if everything has been added. And there you go, redwood log redwood wood stripped redwood log and the stripped redwood wood and the redwood planks. So let's see, we can set this down in any orientation that we want to let's see the wood also works stripped versions also and then the redwood planks. Uh, I personally think that the textures are actually fairly nice, like um, definitely one of my nicer textures if I do say so myself, it is basically only recolored wood, but 
you know, still. So let's take an axe, uh, actually any axe would do. And so first of all, if I, for example, do this on a normal block, it still works. So these are the vanilla blocks. And if I were to do this on the log here, it also works. And it does give us the stripped redwood variant here. The same goes for this. And the way it also works is if I have this in a different orientation, it will remain in that orientation. This was one of the issues that we had before, but this is now fixed. Right, and that's all that we need to do to properly add some custom wood to our game with even a little excursion on the access transformers or the ATs, right? But that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I definitely did. And I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.